Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday, my weekly review of a small knife. I call it We Wednesday. Uh, we is an English word that we used a long time ago for small. Some people still use the word, I guess. So, We Wednesday, small knife. We've got the Grunt <laughs> by a company that I've not reviewed yet, and it's a company that's been around a while. American Buffalo Knife and Tool, or is it Tool and Knife? I always get those turned down the wrong way. They just updated their logo, I noticed. Awesome. Here, let me show you the old logo. Yeah, it's okay, right? Their new logo. There you go. That's a good logo. Um, so what we got here is called the grunt. I know what a runt is, but a grunt, isn't that a sound? Like uh, what the Neanderthals made when they, you know, Neanderthal male looks over, sees a Neanderthal female, grunt, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is the runt that is a grunt. You've got ball bearings in here and a pocket clip on the right side only. Uh, GT, G10, that's a CNC milled, nice round, very comfortable in the hand. We've got a sheep's foot here, hollow grind, you know, just over 20 US dollars. I had to review it, so stick around for the full review of the American Buffalo Tool and Knife Knife and Tool Grunt coming at you right now. So yeah, this is a small knife. You know, see here's my hand. <laughs> my hands are large, bordering on extra large in North American sizes, 10 and 11 in the European sizes. You've noticed on my channel that I almost never do size comparisons with putting another knife beside a knife. Uh, the main reason for that is, what if you don't have that other knife? You know, that it really doesn't do you any good uh, to compare the size of one thing that you don't have with another thing that you don't have. You know, it, it always drove me nuts when people would do that. Uh, still does. It's one of my pet peeves. So I usually don't do size comparisons. But here, let's do a little size comparison with something that almost everybody has or has had. There's a Bic lighter, the standard size. You know, not the mini or not the extra large. So it's just a little bit bigger than a Bic lighter in terms of, you know, how long it is and how wide it is and, you know, how thick it is. You know, it's a bit bigger than that. It's a bit heavier too <laughs> because it's steel and G10. So the grunt here is a nice hollow grind sheep's foot knife. You know, when you've got a belly, uh, belly on the blade and you've got this kind of end on the knife here, that's generally called a sheep's foot. And uh, the styling, we've got liners, so steel liners inside. We've got uh, pillars here for open pillar construction. We've got skeletonization in there. I'll show you that a little bit more. There's no lanyard hole, as you might have noticed. And uh, there's a, that pillar right there for the open pillar construction. It can work a little bit for, you know, if you tied off some cordage on there, that could work if you tied it nice and tight and then use some heat maybe from uh, a lighter <laughs> to, you know, just really shrink it on there. Oh, so I knew it was going to happen sometime soon, but my overhead lighting just died on me. I'll have to do something about that. Uh, I've got still some lighting, as you can see from the shadows here, and hopefully i got shadows on the other side. i got lights on both sides pointing in, so hopefully that'll still make this video look okay. Uh, yeah, the knife I was talking about, what was I talking about on this thing? <laughs> oh, well, I forget what it was. Um, it's very comfortable. The liner release is really good. Uh, the lockup is excellent. I'll give you a close-up shot of that. It's exactly where I want a brand new knife to be. Easy to unlock. Blade centering, just a little bit off, not much at all. Pretty close to centered. The uh, flipper tab is just behind the pivot, so you can just push pretty much straight down and Whoa, she flips out with good authority, and that's because of that detent. And of course, you can do light switch method where you're pulling back as well. And uh, yeah, she opens up very, very well. We've got um, we've got a really nice 
Yeah, fingerprints on there. We've got a really nice satin grind on here. Uh, my fingers are very oily, and so they leave marks very quickly. That's one of the reasons I like stone wash so much. But the satin grind is done really well. This nice hollow grind comes down, and then it's a shallow grind for... It's relatively the same thickness of steel from about here down to the edge. So almost, you know, about three-eighths of an inch where it's this, basically the same thickness and then it's a hollow, you know, curve up here, which means you'll be able to sharpen this knife for years and years and years until it's up to about here. And it'll be, have, have about the same thickness behind the grind as it did when it's brand new. So it's still going to be a very functional knife for a long time if you want to use this as one of your, you know, carry around users. And I do like to carry a knife like this around. Usually I'll pull out something like this in the smaller size, something that'll help me do whatever I need to get done instead of pulling out, you know, my knives that are over three inch blades. Just because, you know, these aren't very threatening. You know, if it's not a situation where I need to protect myself, you know, something like this is very EDCable and it just, it fulfills most tasks. So we've got a nice flat here. Uh, the spine has got the edges just broken a little bit so it's not sharp, but it's not uh, rounded over either. Sharpness choil here is way too small and that's why I'll show you a little bit of a video of what this looks like now. I've resharpened it and the video is after I sharpened it. And on this side, you know, it goes across quite well. And then you get up to where the plunge starts coming up. And, you know, I had to start grinding up on the side of the blade just because it's getting thicker, but I still have an edge to sharpen. And that's just what I have to do. What the factory does on these kinds of things, every knife factory does this, and I dislike it tremendously is, you know, they're sharpening this on the wheel and then they get close to the end here and they just increase the angle like crazy right near the sharpness toil so that they can make it sharp without making it look super ugly here. But the angle changes tremendously on that last quarter inch before the sharpness toil. And on this side, it is stupid obvious. And so the reason I wasn't able to sharpen this little edge here is I'd have to take off so much steel to get down to there that it's not worth it. Is that a, a really big deal? No, it's you know a little over 20 bucks, this knife. Yeah, it's not a big, big deal. But I see this same thing on $60 knives. I see the same thing on $100 knives. I see the same thing happening on $200 knives. And it really bugs me. Uh, sorry, American Buffalo, that I'm saying this on your video, but I'm really not picking on you. All the companies are doing this, and I dislike it. But on a you know $22 knife, $21 knife, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, the thing is, I don't use that little tip of the blade very much. Anyways, most of us use, if you measure from here up about an inch, most of us use that spot on the knife an awful lot, and then the rest as well. And we don't really use this spot here very much. That's why a lot of knife companies put a forward choil where you can put your finger up there because, you know, we tend not to use that spot anyways. But let's do all the measurements now and talk about that. We've got a cutting edge and the blade length are the same. 6.1 centimeters, 2.4 inches. A manufacturer's spec says 2.5 inches. This one's 2.4. Uh, the blade thickness is 2.85 millimeters. That's 0.112 inches. The blade depth, it's biggest right here, 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it's 0.51 millimeters, which is 20 thousandths of an inch. Beautiful, beautiful, nice edge there. They did a great job. I already talked about that. The grind angle, um, this uh, yep, this side. This side was 17.5 degrees for most of the knife, except for down here near the choil. And on this side, it was 18.1 degrees. So I've sharpened this knife down to 17.5 on both sides. 
8 Sierra 13 MOV stainless steel, Rockwell of about 57, 58. I like 20 degrees more. Once you start getting really shallow angles, this edge, edge, the sharp edge can deteriorate a bit. So if I find that happening to this, then the next time I sharpen it, it'll be 20 degrees. That's usually what I, well, I already said that. That's what I usually do. Handle, handle length is 8.4 centimeters, 3.3 inches. The grip area between my thumbs is 6.5 centimeters, 2.56 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.42 centimeters. That's 0.56 of an inch, so a little over half an inch thick. And then the handle depth, it's biggest right there, 2.63 centimeters, 1.04 inches. And then when you close the knife up, now it's biggest right here, 3.7 centimeters, 1.46. So just under an inch and a half by 3.3 inches and it's light 76 grams 2.7 ounces very very good oh and the full size of the knife with the blade deployed we're talking 100 and, yeah 145 millimeters 14.5 centimeters which is 5.71 inches not bad at all how much does this knife cost you well i got mine from white mountain knives 24 dollars and 99 cents Coupon code CCE gets you 10% off the entire store. So that takes off about $250. So you're looking at around $22 for this knife from White Mountain Knives. And $22 is the very best price I found anywhere else. So why not support Jake and support White Mountain Knives because they're helping me out. Fit and finish on this knife. At this price range, this fit and finish is awesome. The only thing for the fit and finish I don't like is this sharpening right at the end here. And that you can see the detent hole just barely right there. Right there, you can barely see it. The line's hidden where it is. Um, oh, did I, I didn't talk about it. When I took this, I didn't talk about something. When I took this knife apart, you saw the pictures. They have a little steel race in there. You know, it's like a little washer. And um, it was put right next to the blade on both sides, both of them. But I put it next to the liners. The blade's been hardened. The liners have not been hardened. Those little races have been hardened. So what I did was, from the outside in, I've got the race, bearings, blade. And that means on either side of the ball bearings is a very hard surface, so it won't wear as quickly as it would the other way. The way it was, was you know, liner, bearings, race, knife. So I changed the order of those in there and the action improved even a little bit, but generally the action improves after I've taken the knife apart and I've adjusted it anyways. And action is so beautiful on this. Love the G10. There's just a little bit of milling lines that you can see going across the body of the handle right here. Just a little bit of traction and this swell that comes back here and it's, oh, it's beautiful. This knife is very, very comfortable. Great detent, very nice hollow grind, lots of steel here to sharpen this knife many, many times and have it still be thin at the edge. Uh, great liner work. Uh, this liner release, awesome. It's skeletonized to make it lighter. One of the odd things about this is this is a T9 screw and these are T6s. You would think they would use a T8, but nope, they chose a T9. Um, the cons. I would like it to have a lanyard hole. A really small knife like this, sometimes I use a, if I use a lanyard, which I rarely do, it's usually with a smaller knife. So I wish there was a lanyard here, but I already talked about that. Um, the sharpener's toil, that's a mistake right there because that's ugly. You know, because I've sharpened it at the same angle all the way up and now that's just ugly right there. Um, I might make this sharpener's toil bigger. I'm going to do a video about making, increasing the size of sharpener's toils. You know, I'm, I'm making some odd video, some other videos. I'm making a video on terms you know, the parts of the knife, terms, terminology and stuff. I'm also going to make a video on how to increase the size of your sharpness toil without wrecking your heat treat on this. The grind, most of the grind on this blade was done very well, just not right there at the toil. 
And I already mentioned the ball bearing logo is just silly. But I think on such a low cost knife, they wanted to put the ball bearing logo on there so that you would know that it's got ball bearings because that's a selling point because a lot of guys are enamored with ball bearings right now. Uh, you can check out the knife from the manufacturer's website at abktinc.com. That's American Buffalo Knife and Tool Incorporated.com. So if you're looking for a little knife and you want something that's got substance, nice cutting edge on here, you know, it's sub three inches, 2.4 inches, uh, good in the hand, decent in the pocket, great detent, looks pretty good. If you like, you know, the basic stuff about this, consider getting one of these. Uh, very much worth the price. And I think it's a beautiful knife. It's a little bit chubby, kind of like yours truly, but it's sharp where it needs to be and it feels good in the hand. I think it'd be good for most people with different hand sizes, everywhere from small hands to men's large. Uh, some men with extra large hands, it, you know, you might find this a little too small, but some guys with really big hands like tiny knives too. So there you go. The Grunt, my very first knife review from American Buffalo Knife and Tool. Thanks for watching. Patreon supporters, your giveaway video for January is coming up very soon. Stay tuned. Thank you for your support. You guys are the best. Remember, everybody, cut towards your chum, not your thumb.